did Adam try to cast blame on Eve? And we have this in Genesis 3. And as he is being questioned um, as what's going on and why they're hiding, why they're saying they're naked. And he says, you know, have you, in verse 11, who told you you're naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is it that you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. Now, those are the verses. They're, they're rather simple. And ever since I was young, I was told that Adam was placing the blame on Eve, and he was, you know, he's trying to avoid this thing. And anyone who believes that, I have a bridge to sell you. And the reason for it is because the people who say that discount entirely the power of the creator of the universe or Yah, whichever one it is, doesn't matter to me in the slightest. Their power is beyond compare. And the idea that you're just going to go ahead and give some half-truth is just preposterous. I mean preposterous. You know why Adam said this is what happened? Because he fully explained what happened. Why did Eve say she was deceived and that's why she did it? Because she's fully explaining everything. There's no casting blame. It is, I'm going to lay out the truth, the entire truth. This whole thing from our society of, oh, you just accept your own actions. You're going to say the whole thing. When you come up for judgment on first or second um, resurrection from Revelation 20, you're telling everything that happened. You don't leave out details. That's what you would do on a regular trial, where you can just kind of give your little half-truth to the judge. That's not what we're going to do in front of a judge that is the real judge who has that amount of power. It doesn't happen. You tell everything fully.